Okay, my family. When I was younger, much younger, still a little child, I prayed all the time. I prayed because I was afraid of the dark. And I would always kneel by my bed and I would pray. And sometimes I would lay down on my bed and have my pillow up around my neck and around my ears trying to hide my head and I would pray in, in my bed for help and safety through the night. And I prayed that he would bless my family and my mother and father and so on and so forth. And uh, I used to have dreams when I was a young child like five or six years old. It was before I started school, so I had to be five or four. And um, I had a reoccurring dream all the time where I was in a, a multitude of people and we were wearing white robes and we were praising our Lord and Savior. And he was speaking to us and asking for volunteers. And somebody went before me and I raised my hand then and when I raised my hand he called me forward I went forward and he had asked me what it was that I, if that I would you know that if I could ensure something what would it be and I said that I would like to be born probably towards the end of time because I would want to be old enough that I was wise enough to be able to make a difference in my children's life to ensure that they made it to heaven. And he spoke to me on a few more items and I remember that uh, he said, what about your circumstances if you had a circumstance? I said, I, it doesn't matter to me which family type I'm born to because I just want loving family. And uh, I said, I'd, the thing that I wish for my life would be that I am never so poor. I don't wish to be rich. I mean, it went through my mind that I, well, it sure would be nice to always have, right? But when I was thinking it, just when I was thinking it, he laughed and said, it is easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into heaven. And as a child, he told me the scripture. And he laughed just hearing my thought. And so I said, I just want to be comfortable and to ensure that my children don't have to dig through the trash for food and that they are safe. And then with that, then I, I entered into a, um, like a Stargate SG-1 type of thing where the, it wasn't really a gate, but it was just on the wall would become, all of a sudden it was, had different colors and stuff like that. There was, and I went through there and that would, I woke up at the end of my dream and I had this dream that was recurring all the time. And it's funny now that I'm older and I have my children and that he did wake me up, that I am doing the best I can to be wise and that I am trying to pass on a lot of information to my children because all of us who have children or grandchildren love them with all of our hearts. We love them as it because Jesus Christ loved us first. It's written in John 1 John 4 19. We love him because he first loved us. And our children are blessings. We are able to love because of our love that Jesus has loved us to show us what love was. He's filled our heart. Our children are blessings to us. In Psalm 127, 3 and 5, it says, Children are, are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is a man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And I never realized, I went for a long time before I had children, and I never realized what a blessing that they truly were. 
and my children helped me to grow instead of being just a big kid. It helped me to have responsibility. And in the past, when it was only myself, all I had to rely on, if I made a mistake, or if I did something wrong, or if I spent money I shouldn't have, or if I lost something, all I had to worry about was myself. And I could deal with that because it was so much easier. But when you have children, it makes you responsible. And you don't make those bad decisions anymore. And you start doing things so that they are blessed, so that they never have to go without, and they help you to grow. So children are a blessing from our Lord to us. I know that my children are the reason why my wife and I have stayed together in our marriage for so long. Because our ch the Lord has blessed me with three beautiful children. And each one of them is unique in their own way. And each one of them is a part of the glue that binds our family together. And two of them currently I take to school and I pray with on the way to school. And my third is in college. And... Um, they're all about five years apart. And um, my youngest being, she just turned nine. And I know that as parents, we all want the best for our children. And we all want them, especially those who are grown and have started their own families, to make sure that they are saved. And I rely a lot upon prayer for them. And I know that he hears our prayers and that when we pray to the Lord that our prayers are alive our prayers are alive until they come to pass and they are a direct line to him As, and I stand on the promises of God especially Acts 16 31 and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house and I stand on that promise of the Lord. And because I know that I'm a family, we're a family that prays together, it, uh, it has made the peace in my house so much better. About seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, the Lord first woke me up, and I heard an audible voice to get my house in order. And I was about ready to lose my family at that time, and I didn't even know it. I was working as a retail store manager, and I worked six days a week, anywhere from 12 to 14 hours a day. And on my one day off, I would just want to sleep to get ready for the next week. And my family weren't happy, and my wife wasn't happy. She was feeling ignored. She was about ready to cheat on me, and um, my children were not doing so well in school. And I would never have known any of this until it was too late, but the Lord woke me up. And so I immediately looked into what does it mean to get your whole house in order, and I started to work on things. And I started to pray more. And then I started to pray more with my children. And I believe that that is what has saved my family and my marriage, was us praying for the Lord and as a whole family unit, and that has helped. And I know that a lot of you out there are worried about your children and your grandchildren. But you have to stand on the promise of the Lord and continue to pray for them, to stand in the gap for them, because I believe that he will deliver all of our families, those that we pray for. As time goes on, he has shown me that in the same amount of time it takes me to pray for my loved ones and my family, I can pray also for my neighbors, for my loved ones, for my brethren, for my relatives, and for the lost. It doesn't take much extra time to pray for those, all those others. And I believe that he has strategically placed 
members of our family throughout the world to be his light or his ambassador in order to show his glory, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness to the world. I believe that we're all strategically placed. And I believe that the things that we do when we plant seeds in our family will come to fruition. All we do is plant the seed. He will water it. He will make sure it grows. He will prune it. He will do whatever is needed to make sure that they are delivered. Some are more stubborn than others, but you know what? He will get them as well. He has a plan, and I don't need to know his plan. I just need to know that I must do my part. So all we can do is after we have planted a seed and those around us is um, to pray upon it and ask the Lord to work his blessings in their lives, to show himself, to show that his arm is not too short to reach them. I believe that uh, my little sister who had died in her sleep, she had um, a blood clot, I guess, that uh, got loose and um, gave her, um, stopped her from living or whatever, and uh, she died in her sleep. Now, my little sister had a problem with um, addiction, and she had a... Uh, she had stopped and gotten off of it and was on uh, some kind of thing to keep her off the medication. But I truly believe that um, in his mercy, he took her for the things that are coming. So I do believe that um, she would have had a harder time than many for some of the things that are going to come upon this earth. And we all pray to be accounted worthy. To escape the testing that is coming upon this earth. So I know that the last time I spoke to her on the phone, her and I prayed together. We prayed for me, but we also prayed for her. Because I was getting ready to go into a court date for um, insurance that I had, I just didn't have it printed out in the car. But I didn't know if I was gonna get fined for not having it in the car or not. And um, I, I didn't get fined, it was all good. I, I, the judge looked at it and said, hey, you took care of it right then and there. So, you know, thank you for doing that and uh, thank you for bringing it in and uh, I got off with no problem. And um, I was so glad that the last time that I had spoke to my sister that it was in love and that we had prayed together. And I know in my mind that she is with Jesus right now at this time. I know I will see her again. In uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7, it tells us that Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And I know that the Lord loves us with this kind of love. When we come to him and we ask for forgiveness and we repent, he doesn't keep a record of those wrongs anymore. He has patience. 
with his children as we have patience with ours. But a time comes when if they're not listening to you, he must correct them. And he corrects us because he loves us as we correct our children because we love them and only want the best for them. I know that um, he has overcome the world, and I know that, uh, and I believe that I was here at this time to make sure that my children, that he did as I asked, that he gave me the wish to make me wise enough at the time to make sure that my children will all make it to heaven. And I pray for them. And I know that those who you pray for and those who you stand in the gap for, those prayers are working in their lives. I have a word from our sister, Deborah Walden Fry. And it's, weep not, my child. Beloved, weep not, my child, though the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The lion of Judah is standing in the gap. You, your spouse, your parent, and your children shall not become prey to him. No, my love, I have declared in my word that I teach you, that I teach your children, and great shall be their peace. I will save your household. I will rescue those you pray for. I will not step back, dear one, but I will contend with those who contend with you. And I always win, dear one. The victory has already been accomplished. The battle is mine. Rely on my strength. Do not let fear overwhelm you. I will keep you from harm and those for whom you intercede. I am the advocate who stands with you against all the powers of the enemy. The outcome is already decided, for I have declared it is finished. The enemy shall fall down, utterly defeated. The sound of the Lion of Judah is roaring through the atmosphere. Do not fear. I am the first and the last, and I shall have the last word in your life. Roar with roar, beloved, and watch the enemy fall. For indeed, Yahweh has spoken. Fear not, my child. Even the captain shall be taken away from the enemy, and that which was stolen from you shall be returned. The Lion of Judah has prevailed. In Isaiah 45 and 25, Indeed, this is what the Lord says, Even the captains of the mighty will be taken away, and the plunder of a tyrant will be retrieved. I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. Revelations 5 and 5 as one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Isaiah 54 and 13 says, All the children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be thy peace of thy children. Job 22 through 29 and 30 When men are brought low, and you say, Lift them up, then he will save the lowly, he will deliver even the guilty one who will be rescued through the purity of your hands. Glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. I thank our Father who art in heaven for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit of God, for Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. I pray the holy fire hedge of protection from Father God's throne room round about you and your families, above you and below you, over your home and over your vehicles, over your places of work and worship, over your pets and provisions, over your children, their schools and their activities. In Jesus Christ's most holy name. And as with any word, take this into your prayer closets and seek confirmation from the Holy Spirit of God. And I pray for all those listening to this audio message that the blood of Jesus would cover you and your loved ones, in Jesus Christ's most holy name. And I pray that you would take time to pray for the lost, 
In Jesus Christ's most holy name, and glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. Amen and amen.